aspects that our retinas will never record. Man Ray's photography. Man Ray's relation to media can be considered in several ways. First of all, as a photographer, he worked for some of the biggest popular print media. He was sought after as a celebrity portraitist, known especially for his portraits of artists Picasso, Braque, Matisse, Cocteau, James Joyce or Gertrude Stein. He was even summoned to Marcel Proust's deathbed to photograph the writer's face shortly after his passing. In the 1920s and 30s, his fashion photographs were in great demand with such prestigious magazines, both American and French, as Harper's Bazaar, Vogue, Vanity Fair, or Vue. But Man Ray's reputation as one of the greatest fashion and glamour photographers stands in stark contrast to how he himself understood media and how he viewed his relevance as an artist and aesthetic thinker. Ambivalent about his commercial success, he relentlessly struggled to be recognized as a key figure of the modernist avant-garde, while both the public and the critical establishment largely ignored his accomplishments as a painter, sculptor, filmmaker and writer. This multi-artist believed that the advantage of working with many different media was that by comparatively exploring their unique capabilities and limitations, he developed deeper insights both into the general nature of imagination and creativity and art's relation to the world at large, especially in terms of how artists employ media and forms to grasp, reflect or distort perceived reality. While the primary focus of my research is on his writings, today I intend to use them to consider Man Ray's ideas about photography and its documentary and utilitarian purposes vis-à-vis -vis its potential as an artistic medium. In his biographical and critical writings, he always discusses photography, juxtaposing it with other forms of expression, with writing, painting and filmmaking, all of which he pursued more or less concurrently, in some cases even bringing them together in individual works. For instance, his three-dimensional objects are accompanied by pants and poetry, while his more experimental photographic works, some of them results of camera-less procedures, are hard to classify as photographs as they display features of painting, drawing or graphic arts. In fact, Man Ray's lifelong affair with photography began because of painting, which was the first medium he pursued. Uh, one day in 1909, the artist picked up a simple Kodak camera to photograph his canvases because he was unsatisfied with the reproductions that professional photographers had made of some of his paintings for catalogues and press. In the process, he quickly discovered that despite what the advertising slogan for his camera promised, you press the button, we do the rest, there was more to it than simply recording and documenting reality. In fact, photographing at first, quote, seemed to require devilish dexterity, unquote, and, Man Ray continued, translating color into black and white required not only technical skill, but an understanding as well of the works to be copied. No one, I figured, was better qualified for this work than the painter himself. Thus, Man Ray places the painter and the photographer on a par. He explains, I had never shared the contempt shown by other painters for photography. There was no competition involved. Rather, the two mediums were engaged in different paths. In the course of photographing his own paintings and soon those of others, Man Ray became increasingly aware that works of art assumed a unique, unexpected aesthetic quality, perhaps exceeding the original so much so that at some point he decided to destroy the picture and keep the print, as he put it, concluding that painting is dead, finished, and an outmoded means of expression, and that photography will dethrone it once the public's visual education is complete. While Man Ray's words should always be taken with a grain of salt, he will contradict himself many times and he'll continue painting until his death, 
What's interesting in this context is his imaginative vision of photography's artistic potential as opposed to its function as a mere means of mechanical reproduction. The seemingly automatic recording of reality by simply snapping the shutter, you press the button, we do the rest, on the one hand gave it a unique sense of authenticity, veracity and objectivity, absent from other picture making techniques, hence the cliche, the camera doesn't lie. But on the other hand, it implied that photography was unreflective, automatic and quick, cold, detached, a simple extension of the eye, all of which seemed to preclude its capacity as a medium of creative expression. Photography's early history is marred by this kind of reasoning. Because it depends on technology, it is a mechanical art, and as such, it doesn't create art forms. This contention was the topic of a considerable dispute when the young Man Ray entered the orbit of the legendary modern art promoter and photographer Alfred Stiglitz. Stiglitz's quarterly magazine Camera Work provided a platform for thought-provoking views in the debate about the functions of photography and painting, such as that of Matisse, who claimed that, quote, if it is practiced by a man of taste, photography will have the appearance of art, the appearance of art, uh, end of quote, and that, uh, quote, photography should register and give us documents, end of quote. And in 1913, Camera Work published a provocative essay by Marius Desaias titled Photography is Not Art, in which the Mexican-born critic and caricaturist explored the status of art at the beginning of the 20th century and then compared its attributes with photography, reaching the conclusion that photography is the plastic verification of fact. Art presents to us what we may call the emotional or intellectual truth, photography the material truth, and for this reason, Photography is not art, but photographs can be made to be art. Stiglitz, in contrast, espoused his belief in the aesthetic potential of the medium and was determined to prove that photography was as capable of artistic expression as painting and sculpture. And to approach the aesthetic quality of painting and to infuse his photographs with painterly qualities, Stiglitz made very deliberate compositional choices and made use of such natural elements as rain, snow or steam. To appropriate the appearance of drawing, watercolor or painting in his pictorialist studies, he also took great care in producing the finished photographic prints. And later in his career, around the time of Man Ray's arrival in his circle of artists, he shifted his understanding of what made photography an art form and came to a conclusion that any attempts at cloaking the medium's natural strengths and characteristics by heavily manipulating the final print was no longer viable. His photographer colleagues that he mentored developed various other approaches, but the single important denominator was that even those photographs that strove for realism, representationalism, even even hard edged documentation could be used in the service of the photographer's imagination. This is visible in works as different as those produced by, for instance, Edward J. Steichen, featured most prominently in camera work whose photographs are characterized by soft focus and self consciously artistic style, or the works by Paul Strand. Whether we look at the formal coherence, geometric form, compositional precision, and distinctive rhythm of his abstractions, or at his so-called straight photography, that is, photographic projects capturing city life and street portraits commenting on the human condition. Or Charles Schiele, who, like Steichen and Man Ray, was also a painter and uh, worked across media. Uh, he was also a filmmaker, like Man Ray, exploring relationships between photography, film, drawing and painting and later even developing a quasi-photographic style of painting known as precisionism. Immersed in the new artistic idioms and approaches to artistic media, Man Ray absorbed the novel ideas which aroused his curiosity about photography and the questions concerning its artistic merit. The evolution of his thinking about what art is is visible in how Man Ray's painting style increasingly reflected his fascination with devices, tools and mechanical means of production. And if we consider how his painting evolved, we can see the movement from the naturalistic to the mechanical, from the artist's direct confrontation with nature, through the cubist stage, revealing his interest in manipulating the medium, 
two paintings like this one off as he explained quote pseudo mechanistic forms more or less invented but suggesting geometric contraptions that were neither logical nor scientific end of quote created with the use of an airbrush that is a cylinder of compressed air forcing ink or paint through the device these works stage a perverse reversal of media airbrush paintings look like photographs because of the subtle photography-like tonalities created in the process Man Ray described the result as the photographic quality linked with the appearance of a work that had not been done by human hands and he called it almost automatic painting and a pure cerebral activity because his hands didn't touch any support and thus excluded the attribute of handmade traditionally associated with art throughout the centuries an irreverent inventor unconstrained by rules man ray was described in a french magazine in an article introducing the artist as photography's dilemma due to discoveries that set him apart from other photographers unheeding of stiglitz's call for unmanipulated images functioning as visual analogues of the photographer's emotional experience man ray became the champion of manipulation he reframed retouched negative printed reversed and inverted pictures and he even took camera less photographs while developing prints in the dark room at the end of 1921 man ray stumbled across the 19th century photographic practice of making an image without using a camera by placing an object on light sensitive photographic paper and exposing it to light for a few seconds he created a silhouette of whatever was on top of the paper obtaining a reverse image and in a punning combination of his own name and the word photograph man ray called these photograms rayographs here are some of them unearthly ghostly white shapes implying three-dimensionality man ray described them as startlingly new and mysterious indeed since they are made without a film negative the images are one of a kind objects like a painting or drawing man ray was now working with light itself as his new medium the principles behind the creation of cameraless photographs were not new but man ray created stunning imagery that resembled nothing known at the time his startling juxtapositions and rayographs transported his images out of the realm of commonplace reality and allowed him to create landscapes of the mind echoing automatic writing of the surrealist who in fact saw man ray as a precursor to surrealism and called him a chemist of mysteries who creates a new world and photographs it to prove that it exists likewise another signature technique of man ray solarization discovered when his assistant lee miller accidentally switched on the light in the dark room gave his prints a surprising appearance with a halo surrounding each figure man ray challenged the conventional idea that photography merely recorded reality and posed pertinent philosophical questions about reality itself he also contested long-held assumptions about what photography and art should be or how they should be made his inclination to aesthetic anarchism was stirred by his lifelong friendship and artistic collaboration with marcel duchamp who was instrumental in the development of man ray's work and career in 1913 duchamp famously asked the provocative and intriguing question can one make works that are not of art the two artists became accomplices in their insistent rethinking of the work of art and launched an assault on traditional artwork ideologies and art making practices both men agreed that art should be a conduit of thought and that it should provide a serious exercise of what duchamp called gray matter intended not only to amuse but also provoke an intellectual response and man ray too defined the work of art as quote an intellectual form which is a concentrated parallel of life end of quote assessing man ray's photographic work duchamp observed that the camera was for man ray quote a mere instrument in the service of the mind both men together discovered in photography an ideal means of creative work and i'm showing you here some photographs of duchamp taken by man ray on the left um, there's a fittingly ironic tribute to the iconoclasm of both artists man ray presents duchamp's profile in the softly focused classicizing style of traditional commercial studio 
portraiture. And on the right, you can see a photo capturing both artists' eccentricities and their appreciation of uniqueness. Duchamp is playing with shaving cream while Man Ray is transforming what could have been a typical portrait into something far more interesting. And this is Rose Salavi, Duchamp's female alter ego, whose name is a pun on the French pronunciation. Man Ray photographed Rose Salavi, that is Duchamp, dressed in drag, complete with makeup, perfume, jewelry, uh, lavish furs, several times. What better than a photograph to lend reality to, underpin, and certify the authenticity of a fact, an event, or, or the existence of a person? The two artists' photographic collaboration satisfied in them the precision optics requirement, which would give rise with Duchamp to different research projects involving optics, uh, the photographic production of which was, as we know, done at the suggestion of Man Ray. This photograph, titled Dust Breeding, a document of Duchamp's The Large Glass after it had collected a year's worth of dust under his bed, was taken with a two hour long exposure that beautifully captures the complex texture and diversity of materials that lay atop the glass surface. In a reciprocal way, it's possible to see in Man Ray's research into shadows and machines an influence stemming from Duchamp's work on cast shadows and the mechanics of large glass. Man Ray's laboratory experiments reflect his concern for expressing the life of objects, their independence, their capacity to mean something more than they would when seen as simple products manufactured for a specific purpose. La Femme, an egg beater, whose significance is transformed by way of the titles, is one example of that. The rayograph proceeded along the same lines. The aim here was to give things another appearance. The objects are recognizable, though transformed and transported into a foreign world. It is precisely this relationship and this dialectic between the known and the unknown that helps to open up the mind to another reality. The rayograph showed that, contrary to received wisdom, the photograph was not simply a reproductive or documentary tool, but something creative and imaginative, something that could give rise um, to imagery emerging from the artist's imagination, inspiration, and thinking. Man Ray also capitalized on chance and accident. He said, quote, the picture was not the result of chance, but a combination of unforeseen circumstances and forces. This experience led me to provoke accidents, examine the results closely, and utilize them with more or less control." End of quote. Now, some 20 years later, avant-garde composers such as John Cage, Pierre Boulez, and Witold Lutosławski would adopt the same view to make aleatoric music. This is just one example of the visionary quality of Man Ray's art and thought. They are evidence that his pioneering experiments, experiments which juxtaposed aesthetic judgment and technique, dexterity and mechanical action, invention and reproduction, intention and accident, and freedom and repetition, to name a few examples of opposition's contrast, prefigured an anticipated consideration about photographic ontology and indexicality, both by practitioners and by theorists, who in the course of the 20th century continued to expand the study of art and aesthetics by invoking a broad range of ideas and concepts from other disciplines, including philosophy, anthropology, sociology and cultural history, as well as literary and language studies. In fact, while Man Ray is a quintessential modernist, Especially his penchant for paradox and self-contradiction makes him also one of the most important forerunners of postmodernism. Think, for instance, about the combined effects of the violation of the rayograph's uniqueness by Man Ray himself. He had to make them reproducible so they could be presented in portfolios. Similarly paradoxical is how his solarized photographs, apparently deprived of the aura of true works of art by being mechanically reproduced, still exuded, and very visibly so, precisely because of how the technique of solarization works. It creates a visible aura around the photographed subject. Thank you.